Time for the second installment. We are going to do some graphing now. Uh, we're going to make a circle graph, a histogram, and a couple of bar graphs. This is one variable statistics. So first we're going to make a circle graph or a pie chart for the gender information that we got from this sort of fake survey here. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you try to just make a chart out of this. I'm going to highlight that column, insert chart. And there are a couple of suggested charts, and you can see this one just sort of lists everything. It's a table, and this isn't really relevant. It's uh, a map. So those aren't really what we're looking for. And the, the reason for that is that this is a list of all the information. And in order to do uh, a circle graph or a pie chart, let me just show you here, go to pie and click here, you get this error message saying, eh, this isn't in the right format. What, it, what we want is uh, male with a percentage and female with a percentage. And so instead, we are going to um, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to select and highlight uh, the four columns of data that we have here. Remember, these are summaries that we've already generated. So these four columns are all the information that we have from our survey, along with the uh, headers. And I'm going to make a pivot table. You don't have to do it this way, but this is, I think, one of the most uh, efficient ways to do this. Make a pivot table, and down the rows here on this side, I want to have the genders listed and you can see that it goes through the data and it finds the two different values that are um, included there and then I want to know how many times does the word female occur and how many times does the word male occur that's this values area and I'm just going to add the gender um, in there again and it's offers to summarize it in a few different ways some doesn't work because um, it's not that would be adding up some numbers what we're going to use is count a which counts any um, any cell that is a not blank. If it's blank then it doesn't count. If it is if it has a value in it and it has the word female in the gender column then uh, then we're good. I didn't have to use gender here. I could have done any kind of anything else anywhere that there is a value. I could have chosen favorite hot drink and counted that instead and it'll give me the same thing. There are 28 rows that have female in the gender spot and then uh, not a blank in the favorite hot drink column. So there's my information. Now I'm going to highlight and uh, graph that. You can see it's suggested now a pie chart, 56% female, 44% male. You can just insert your chart from there. So that's one of the things. That's the circle graph. Uh, let's go down to the uh, bar graph for favorite hot drink. That one's not too, too hard to do either. So instead of gender here, I'm going to add a field for favorite hot drink down the left hand side and once again it has sort of found the things that I want right in here and I'm going to add uh, values I'll just use the same thing favorite hot drink not some but count how many times does anything occur when there's a coffee uh, listed in the favorite hot drink column five times okay let's just highlight that choose insert chart they give me a bar graph to begin with with, with the horizontal bars uh, or there's the column chart, and either one of those is fine. I think of both of those as a as a bar graph, and you can see the height of each column depends on uh, how many times that occurred. All right, let's see the next one here. Uh, let's go back up to to the uh, histogram. Histogram for height. This one we're going to go back to our all results sheet, and uh, I want to just highlight this and show you. I'm just going to select that column, column C, from the first row which includes the word height all the way down to row 51 insert a chart and because these are numbers now not words you can see the histogram is uh, the default that is suggested by the software by the by the web application and so there it is i'm going to i'm going to actually insert that cuz i want to show you that you can modify some things in that uh, in that chart it's going to pop it into my uh, table into my spreadsheet up here you can change some things uh, and go back to the advanced edit mode just to click the little arrow there and I'm going to scroll down I could have done this before I stuck it in there see the buckets area the buckets these are each buckets anything that falls into this bucket gets included in this uh, column here anything from 140 up to uh, that's less than 147 so I'm gonna make the bucket size 5 and you see how the graph changed and now anything from 140 uh, up to I think 144, not including 145, gets included in this column right here, and then the next column, and the next column, and so on. And so you, if you change the bucket size, let's say I make it 10, I'm going to get half as many columns, and things get sort of combined. Those columns are combined. 
and the item dividers just uh, shows you uh, the individual items that are in that list. So that's how you can make a nice little histogram. Get rid of that. Okay, now the last one is a little bit tricky, the bar graph for grade, because the grade here, that's a number, right? And so um, you got to be careful with numbers, because if, if it sees it as a number, then we're going to have a problem. I'm going to change that. See how I highlighted it? Went to Format, Number, and Plain Text, because I don't really want to think of this as a number. I want to think of this as a category of student, a student in a particular grade. The number, the value 10, isn't actually important. This is a category of students, students that are in their second year of high school. And so I'm going to, uh, oh, sorry, I don't want to do that here. I want to go to my pivot table. And I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to summarize grade here. And there's my count of grades. I just left my value stuff. So 10, you see it's not even in order because uh, uh, 9 alphabetically comes after t uh, 10, 11, and 12. Well, anyway, we'll just start with this. I could reorder that. I'm going to put my uh, chart in. So there's there's a circle graph. What did I ask for again? I asked for a bar graph. So we'll, maybe I'll do this one here. Uh, you can see the order has changed. You can just change that once you create the chart. You can uh, customize and rearrange things. And that's, that's how that's done. Or one other option is you could just copy this. Maybe I'll make it into a new spreadsheet here. And I'll paste it. Just paste those values. And then I can reorder things the way I want to see them just like this. And now the values are in the order that I want. And uh, this stays put then, and I can reuse my pivot table for something else. So one of the things I like to do is uh, I'll make a new sheet for each sort of piece of information that I have. I've got one here for male and female data, but maybe I would have a new spreadsheet or a new, a new worksheet for each of these uh, four items here. Anyway, so that's how they're all done. We've done a circle graph, a histogram, and a bar graph. All, those are all one variable statistics, not comparing things the way, for example, a scatter plot might. And that's what's coming next. Thanks.